Omagyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Vacha Patita Nam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Paschacha Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're studying the Sri Ishupanishad at the level of Bhakti Shastri, and now we're going on to mantra number 13. Right? Everyone agree? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll invite Amadaji to lead us in chanting mantra number 13. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Anya Devahu Sambhavad. Anya Anyad Ahura Sambhavad Iti Sushrumadhiranam Yena Sad Vichakshakshire Translation Supreme cause of all causes, and that another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. All this is heard from the undisturbed authorities who clearly explain it. Alright, so earlier today we heard about results of worship. Do you remember mantra number 12? Oh, wait. We're on today. What we're doing? We should be doing twelve or thirteen. Thirteen, Mama. Thirteen. Mama. Should be thirteen, right? Yes, yes Mama. Yeah, we finished twelve. Okay, okay. We're doing mantra thirteen. Mantra thirteen, right? Did did Mantiji read mantra thirteen or twelve? Thirteen. Thirteen. Funny. I don't know what happened to my system here. I go from 12 to 14. <laughs> I can't understand what's going on. Somehow I lost mantra 13. Anyway, I've got a book. Mantra number 13. Alright, so you read the purport, you read the translation, please go ahead and start reading the purport. authorities is approved in this mantra. Unless one hears from a bona fide Acharya who is never disturbed, 
by the changes of the material world, one cannot have the real key to transcendental knowledge. The bona fide spiritual master who has also heard the Shruti mantras or Vedic knowledge from his undisturbed Acharya never presents anything that is not mentioned in the Vedic literature. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.25, it is clearly said that those who worship the Pitris or forefathers attain the planets of the forefathers. That the gross materialist who make plans to remain here stay in this world. And that the devotees of the Lord who worship none but Krishna, Krishna, the supreme cause of all causes, reach him in his spiritual sky. Here also in Sri Vishopanishad, it is verified that one achieves different results by different modes of worship. If we worship the Supreme Lord, we will certainly reach Him in His eternal abode. And if we worship their gods like the Sun God or Moon God, we can reach their respective planets without a doubt. And if we wish to remain on this wretched planet with our planning conventions and our stop gap political adjustment we can certainly do that also all right thank you so system of learning hearing we find this again and again coming up in the purports it's a, the important message from lord chaitanya also lord chaitanya gave, gave great importance to hearing and hearing from the proper authorities described here, undisturbed authorities, right? The undisturbed, the dhiras, again it's mentioned dhiranam. So we had this before, the word dhiras, sober-minded, undisturbed, and sushruma, I heard it from the dhiras, so sushruma, dhiranam. So hearing from the proper authority, very important. So, the bona fide spiritual master has, who has also heard the, the Shruti mantras, right? So, is this, is this also Shruti mantra? Yes, Maharaj, you should finish it Shruti. Right, yes, we're hearing from the Vedas, this is the original Vedic knowledge, so nobody can say, oh, I don't accept this, this is Shruti, Vedic authority. So Prabhupada talks about, you go where, you, you have the desire to go somewhere, you go there. When you worship the demigods, you go to the demigods. And if you worship Krishna, you can go to him. So man proposes, God disposes. And Prabhupada said, if you want to stay here, you can do that also. We wish to remain on this wretched planet. <laughs> Prabhupada uh, doesn't have a, a great uh, appreciation for this planet. Wretched planet with our pro planning commissions and our stopgap political adjustments. We can do that also. So, uh, we have that in, we have some, some independence. We have very small independence. We heard how Krishna is supremely independent. Our independence is very small. Our independence is either Krishna or Maya. Which one do we want? We get that choice. Are we going to surrender to Krishna or we go to Maya? We go to Maya, then we come under the laws of our karma. We have our karma will arrange for us to worship a particular demigod or to worship the ghosts or the pitris, whatever. This is all due to our karma, due to our situation in the material energy. But if we surrender to Krishna, then Krishna can make arrangements to bring us out from this place. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's have a man read. Hare Krishna. 
nowhere in authentic scripture is it said that one will ultimately reach the same goal by doing anything or worshiping anyone such foolish theories are offered by self made spiritual masters who have no connection with the parampara the bona fide system of disciplic succession the bona fide spiritual master cannot say that all paths lead to the same goal and that anyone can attain this goal by his own mode of worship of the demigods or of the supreme or whatever any common man can very easily understand that a person can reach his destination only when he has purchased a ticket for the destination a person who has purchased a ticket for kolkata cannot can reach kolkata but not bombay but the so called spiritual master say that any and all paths will take one to the supreme goal such mundane and compromising offers attract many foolish creatures who become puffed up with their manufactured methods of spiritual realization the vedic instructions however do not uphold them unless one has received knowledge from the bona fide spiritual master who is in the recognized line of disciplic succession one cannot have the real thing as it is krishna tells arjuna in bhagavad gita 4.2 एवं परंपरा प्राप्त इमं राजर्षयो विदु स काले नेह महता योगो नष्ट परंतप दिस साइंस वाज दस रिसीव्ड थ्रू द चेन ऑफ डिसिप्लिन सक्सेशन एंड द सेंटली किंग्स अंडरस्टूड इट इन दैट वे बट इन कोर्स ऑफ टाइम द सक्सेशन वाज ब्रोकन एंड देयरफॉर द साइंस एज इट इज अपीयर्स टू बी लॉस्ट हरे कृष्ण So we often hear this so-called theory, this uh, bogus philosophy, that all paths lead to the same goal. It's all one. Doesn't matter who you worship. It doesn't matter where you go. It's all the one, all leading to the same thing. So, how will you argue against this? What is your logical approach to this? Give up. some logical argument to defeat this can you hare krishna maharaj yes maharaj as the example given here we should first decide where we want to go so when we discuss with uh, people outside then first we should ask them where you want to go what is your ultimate goal in life if you want to reach to the uh god head then in that case you have to versi- you have to go to the disciplic success and route you cannot go to bona bogus gurus because the guru parampara system will lead you to the krishna bhakti J- just just give me a logical go. argument just give me some logical argument why this cannot make any sense you don't have to tell me about krishna bhakti I just want some logical argument to show that this is nonsense. What does Prabhupada say? Prabhupada explain. He gives an example. The Prabhupada is giving example of a, a train ticket. Yes. That if you want to go to Kolkata, we have to buy a ticket. We have to buy a ticket to Kolkata and we have to board a train for Kolkata, not to Bombay. Right. Yeah, that's logical. Now what's the what's the statement in the scripture to defeat this to to support to to support this the logical argument we can also quote scriptures right what does our scripture what does Bhagavad Gita say here Prabhupada is quoting the sloka four point two from the Bhagavad Gita that this uh, supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession and the saintly kings understood it in that way. So, so we also should go for this disciplic success on uh, knowledge. So you're saying this knowledge, this knowledge that all the paths lead to the same goal, is not in the disciplic succession. No, unless we go for disciplic success, we cannot uh, reach to the ultimate truth. Well, they may say, well, Ram Krishna, he has his own disciplic succession. 
we have to to see the disciplic succession starting from the knowledge imparted by lord krishna and then the disciplic succession come in the four uh, four lines well not all the disciplic successions come from lord krishna some of them come from vishnu right ramanuja they say vishnu is the supreme narayan and krishna is one of the incarnations not every no they're not all krishna bhaktas different sampradayas they worship different like right? sri vaishnavas they don't give so much importance to krishna they are worshiping more lord rama lord ram and uh, lakshmi narayan vishnu avatars sometimes krishna but not much So you have to be careful like that. No, the, the who knows the better verse? Where's Uttama Krishna? Uttama Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, don't know what pronoun at your revival. So what's the verse from the Bhagavad Gita to defeat this logic that all pass lead to? This? In this logic, in this verse, logic is if we worship anything Vishnu or above or Vishnu Dutta, that is perfect. If we worship. Lord Vishnu or Abu Abu Vishnu Dutta, that is perfect. But ultimately, as we know that that three times Ram Nam, one times Krishna's name. So in that way, what is the ultimate we have to reach? That is, which is as already given to uh, uh, given to in the name of Krishna, worshiping to Krishna. So do you know the verse in Bhagavad Gita which I am looking for, which can defeat this example? No, that's not that's not going to help me defeat Yatamat Tatapat. No, that's not. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this is the verse. Yanti Deva Prata Devan. This is the verse. You give me the meaning. Those who worship the demigods take the birth among the demigods. Right. And those who worship spirit gods, uh, they will take the spirit birth in the, uh, among the ghosts. Right. Brothers and sisters. Right. And those who worship me, they will come to me. Yes, very clear. Quote that verse, then it's all bit, it's very clear, right? Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's have another Prabhu read. Nowhere. When Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. When Lord Sri Krishna was present on this earth. No, no. Bhakti Yoga. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Bhakti Yoga principles defined in the Bhagavad Gita had become destroyed. Therefore, the Lord had to re-establish. The discipline, the the disciplic system, beginning with Arjuna, who was the most confidential friend and devotee of the Lord. The Lord clearly told Arjuna, Bhagavad Gita 4.3, that it was because Arjuna was his devotee and friend that he could understand the principle of the Bhagavad Gita. In the in other words. Only the Lord's devotee and friend can understand the Gita. This also means that only one who followed the path of Arjuna can understand the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so Prabhupada saying Lord Krishna was when Lord Krishna was present, Bhakti Yoga principles had become distorted, as they were. The Lord Krishna, of course. He came to speak the Bhagavad Gita, to re-establish the principles of Bhakti Yoga, right? Yes. Because Yoga Nashta Parantapa, the knowledge had become lost, so Krishna had to come to re-establish it again. So why did he pick Arjuna? What's Arjuna's? Arjuna is Krishna's friend and relative also. Yeah. He's a devotee. 
Right. Bhakto Sime Sakacheti Rahasyam Hieto. Because you're my devotee as well as my. Not that he's a Brahmana. You may think, why didn't he pick a Brahmana? You know, why didn't. Surely. But Arjuna is devotee. And they've been friends a long time. And they often talk philosophy with each other. Uh, they, Krishna enjoyed, enjoys Arjuna's company. Wherever Krishna goes, Arjuna will go with them. Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita right now in some other universe, and Arjuna is with him. Prabhupada told us, he said that Arjuna and the Pandavas, they don't go back to Godhead. They stay here in this world to help in the different pastimes of the Lord. So very special devotees, Arjuna and his brothers, how much they suffered, how much they underwent for the pleasure of Krishna. Okay, go ahead. Another Prabhu? Hey Krishna, at the present moment there are many interpreters and the translators of this sublime dialogue who are not who have nothing for Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Such interpreters explain the verses of Bhagavad Gita in their own way and postulate all sorts of rubbish in the name of the Gita. Such interpreters believe neither in Sri Krishna nor in his eternal abode. How then can they explain the Bhagavad Gita? Hmm. Hmm. Krishna clearly says that only those who have lost their sense or sheep uh, their sense would shift the demigods for faulty for, for, for towards Bhagavad Gita 7.20 and 2.3. Ultimately, ultimately, he advises that one give up all other ways and modes of worship and fully surrender to him alone. Uh, alone. Bhagavad Gita 18.66. Only those who are cleansed of all sinful reactions and have such unthinking faith in the Supreme Lord. Others will continue hovering on the material platform with their paltry ways of worship and thus will be misled, misled from the real path under the false impression that all paths lead to the same goal. Okay, thank you. So, Prabhupada is describing here to us qualification to render devotional service. If they want to do service, to have such unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord, what's required? Uh, those, who are clean, those should have cleaned all their sinful reactions. Those so, who are clean stop all their sinful reactions. How, how, can we get, how can we do that? How can we get rid of all of our sinful reactions? By being a pure devotee, they have to do they have to do their uh, prescribed duties in a detached manner and uh, purity of actions should be, uh, they should, uh, they, all their activities should be purified. We want to... We, they will get into, they will get into uh, if, you know, uh, the path of bhakti yoga, they will get into it. Can you, recommend, can you recommend a particular part of the bhakti yoga process which we should do to help us to get rid of sinful reactions? Yes. Yes, what? If by purified, uh, when the kar kar Nishkama Karma, when we perform, our uh, activities and mind gets so purified. The purified mind, the bhakti automatically develops. So when we follow bhakti yoga, now for God, it is level. No, but I, no, 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 I, I don't, you know, this is not why I want. How are we going to get rid of our sinful reactions? What's it? Quick bhakti, process. Bhakti, is the, bhakti, bhakti pure, pure, pure bhakti is. Uh, what do we need to do then? What is that pure bhakti? How are you going to do it? Pure bhakti can be do it with chanting. And ah, chanting, right. And following the, following chanting. The by chanting the holy name, right? The power of the holy name. If we call out the holy, the chanting of the Sankirtan. We join in the Sankirtan and the chanting of the Holy Name. Lord Chaitanya says, Chaito Darpana Marjanam, right? Cleanses the mirror of the mind, extinguishes the blazing fire of material life. Mm. 
This is the Sankirtan movement. Tasmat Sankirtanam Vishnu Jagan Mangalam Amhasham. Nothing more auspicious than the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. It can destroy unlimited amounts of sinful reactions. So this is very important. We have the, the chanting of the holy name. We have to understand this very important point. We want to get rid of these sinful reactions. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, those people who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life, and who are free from sinful reactions, then they can engage themselves in my service with determination. So to, how, how to get rid of these sinful reactions? We have to engage in particularly the chanting of the Holy Name and hearing the glories of the Lord and chanting these glories again also. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. It takes away all of our sinful reactions. Okay, go ahead, Matijis now. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. In this mantra of Sri Ishopanishad, the word Sambhavar, by worship of the Supreme Cause, is very significant. The Lord Krishna is original personality of Godhead and everything that exists has inanimate from Him. In the Bhagavad Gita 10.8, Lord says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matta Sarvam Pravartate Iti Matva Bhajante Ma Uda Bhava Samantita I am the source of all spiritual and material world. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly knows this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Okay. So, again, we're hearing about the Lord or this uh, the Supreme Cause, Sambhavat, the worship of the Supreme Cause. So the Supreme, the Absolute. This section is dealing with the, the worship of the Absolute and the Relative. Right? We heard about knowledge, Absolute knowledge and Relative knowledge. Absolute knowledge was Vidya and Relative knowledge was the Avidya. We learned that we have to cultivate both knowledge of the Absolute and the Relative. Right? Do you remember that, Madhaji? Yes, Maharaj. And remember we spoke about having a balance between the material and the, between the, 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 the two. We have to cultivate both the, the, the knowledge of the Vidya and the Avidya. Do you yes, feel, do you feel, can, can, you, can, you, can, you understand, can you appreciate how Prabhupada has given us that kind of understanding in Krishna Consciousness, a balanced program that, you know, somebody may feel, oh, you people, you know, you're only, you're only in the spiritual, you're living in another world, you're only chanting Hare Krishna, and, and you, 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 people may ridicule us like that. They may say that, well, we're not living a proper life, you know. Can, could, could you argue again? Could you give me evidence? Could you say something about the balance between Vidya and Avidya, the relative and the absolute in our Krishna consciousness movement, in the philosophy, the lifestyle of a devotee? Do you feel we're being neglectful in any way? No, absolutely not. So what are some, how do you feel is better than other people? Uh, because devotee use every material thing in this world, they use for the Krishna service. Oh, that's fanatic. You're just a fanatic. 
You know, if you talk like that to people, you know, they'll just laugh at you, you know, they'll say, you're just fanatic, you know. <laughs> Nobody's going to really go for that kind of argument, you talk like that. You have to... Maharaj, give an example, like now we are using this laptop, so we are using for Krishna service only, we are learning uh, scripture, Ishopanishad. Okay, that's what you like to do, but that doesn't mean that you you have a, a pra you know that you have a balanced program a balanced lifestyle are you neglecting your children by doing this are you taking care of your children what about your children when you come and sit with your laptop and study ishopanishad who's taking care of them lord is taking care <laughs> <laughs> But we have to be careful how we preach. You know, we want to, we want to convince people we have to be careful how we preach. So I'm just trying to make all of you aware of our duties, our, our responsibilities as preachers, as representing the Krishna Consciousness Movement. The Prabhupada has given us a very, a very practical lifestyle. Certainly, it's a much healthier lifestyle than ordinary, most of the people. It's much healthier in the sense that we're very regulated and we give importance to cleanliness and truthfulness and morality and we learn discipline. We learn the, all of these qualities which are very much appreciated in the ordinary world. So we, we want people to know that Krishna Consciousness, it, 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 we're not, you know, it's not that we're just fanatics. That we actually have a very practical way of living, it's a better life. We're, and, and more than, we, we're, we, fi we find happiness, we find genuine happiness and pleasure in our activities, which we don't get in material life. Ordinary struggle for existence and competition and envy and arguing and fighting, all oh, that's the nature of the material world. But in Krishna consciousness, we give importance to living peacefully and simply and happily. So we, we certainly feel that Prabhupada has given us a lot, not just only philosophy of the Vedas, the Shruti mantras, but he, gave, he taught us also about how to live nicely in the material world. What is the proper way, how to live happily. He taught us the importance of the family, how the family should live together, how your husband and wife should get along with each other, how they should cooperate, and taking care of the children also. All of these things, it's all there in the Krishna conscious philosophy. And when you read Prabhupada's books, everything is there. It's not just Prabhupada talking philosophy all the time about the spiritual world, but he's giving a lot of valuable information about how we need to live and how we need to act and what is the proper behavior, how to organize everything. Is that all right? Can you appreciate, can you appreciate this? Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's have another man read. Yes, another Prabhu, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Here is the correct description of the Supreme Lord given by the Lord Himself. The words. Sarvasya Prabhu indicates that Krishna is the creator of everyone, including Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And because these three principal, principal deities of material world are created by the Lord, the Lord is the creator of all that exists in the material and spiritual worlds. In the Atharva Veda, Gopala Tapani Upanishad 1.24, it is similarly said, he who existed before the creation of Brahma and who enlightened Brahma with Vedic knowledge is Lord Shri Krishna. Similarly, in the Narayana Upanishad, one states, 
then the supreme person narayana desired to create all living be living beings thus from narayana brahma was born narayana created all the prajapatis narayana created the indra narayana created indra narayana created eight vasus narayana created 11 rudras narayana created the 12 adityas since narayana is a plenary manifestation of lord krishna narayana and krishna are one and same the narayana upanishad 4 also states devaki san krishna is the supreme lord the identity of narayana with the supreme cause has also been accepted and confirmed by shri pal shankaracharya even though shankara does not belong to the vaishnava or personalist cult the atharva veda maha upanishad 1 also states only narayana existed in the beginning when neither brahma nor shiva not fire no nor water nor stars nor sun nor moon existed the lord does not remain alone but created as he desires krishna himself states in the moksha dharma i created the prajapatis and the rudras they do not have complete knowledge of me because they are covered by my illusionary illusory energy it is also stated in the varaha purana narayana is a supreme personality of godhead and from him the four headed brahma was manifested as well as rudra who later become omniscient <coughs> okay so prabhupad is in this section of the purport prabhupad's giving a lot of scriptural references to establish the position of the lord that there is a supreme lord many of the statements of course they're concerning lord narayan because this is a vedic mantra vedic mantra so giving uh, quoting lord narayan is good for these people from the vedas because not everybody is very much open to krishna you know krishna worship is very special not so well popularized krishna's temples not so much people worship lord rama he is very ideal he is maryada avatar perfect etiquette perfect behavior but krishna <laughs> krishna's lila purushottam he's got his own level of standard right remember what did we say about the lord's activities how how were they described earlier in mantra 8 we were discussing about the lord how he can perform acts which are well they were described right shudam apapavidam do you remember yes bro what's the meaning pure and uncontaminated pure and uncontaminated right can you give an example how th something is never contaminated sunlight maharaj the sunlight the rays of the sun rays of the sun yeah what happens even if it falls on the uncontaminated uh, it falls on the uh, contaminated surface it in fact cleans that but it itself doesn't get contaminated right it purifies the contaminated surface right Pro prabhupad uses the word prophylactic <laughs> prophylactic special word yeah antiseptic and prophylactic so this is krishna's activities ordinary people they have difficulty to understand the pastimes of lord krishna because lord krishna's lila purushottam he's displaying the pastimes of the spiritual world they're not ready they're not qualified to see that therefore publicly we don't promote these kind of things like rasa lila although it's become popular you know you go to kumbha mela and everybody's doing rasa lila they're all presenting it in the dramas krishna lila but actually they're not krishna bhaktas and they don't understand the activities of lord krishna 
So it's very important to understand the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna's activities. So a lot of evidence about Lord Narayan, and Prabhupada then says Lord Narayan is the expansion of Lord Krishna, or they're one and the same, Prabhupada said. Narayan is plenary manifestation of Lord Krishna. Right? I was telling about Lord Chaitanya meeting in, in uh, Sri Ranga discussing about the position of Lakshmi. So Lord Narayan and Krishna are one and the same. We say Krishna is the original, they say Narayan is the original. Some difference there, just different opinions. They have their, they say Lord Narayan is the original source, we say Lord Krishna is the Supreme Bhagavan, the original. Okay, we'll go ahead. Mataji? Hare Krishna. The all Vedic literature confirms that Narayana or Krishna is the cause of all causes. In the Brahma Samhita 5.1 also, it is said that the Supreme Lord is Sri Krishna, Govinda, the delighter of every living being and the primary cause of all causes. The, the, the really learned persons know this from evidence given by the great sages and the Vedas and thus they decide to worship Lord Krishna as all in all. Such persons are called Buddha or really learned because they worship only Krishna. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada refers to the Brahma Samhita. Lord Chaitanya found that Brahma Samhita. Lord Chaitanya actually found it when he was traveling in South India. He was at the temple in Kerala called Adikeshava temple, big temple there in South India, south of Trivandrum. And Lord Chaitanya spent time there. He went there and the, he found this book, Brahma Samhita. And the, oh, he was very happy. He had it copied. And he brought it, and when he came, he gave it. He gave copies to all the devotees. Ramananda Rai immediately told Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai had it copied. Then he came to Puri. All the devotees had come from Mayapur, Navadvip. They all copied it. Lord Chaitanya said, "Brahma Samhita is the essence of all our philosophy. Everything is there." So very important, and so. That Prabhupada refers to the first verse, that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Controller, the cause of all causes. Sarva karana karanam. So those people who really know, who are really learned, they will worship Krishna. We'll go ahead. Prabhu, can read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Thus. Thus, all Vedic literature confirms that Narayana or Krishna is the cause of all causes. No, we read that. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the conviction that Krishna, uh, that Krishna is all in all is established when one hears the transcendental message from the undisturbed Acharya with faith and love. One who has no faith or in or love for Krishna not Krishna cannot be convinced by of this uh, simple truth. Those who are faithless are described in the Bhagavad Gita 9.11 as Mudas, fools or ashes. It is said that the Mudas derive the personality of Godhead because they do not have complete knowledge from the unauthorized Acharya. One who is disturbed by the virtue of material energy is not qualified to become an Acharya. Okay, so what's the qualification for the Acharya? How do we know who's an Acharya? The seven transcendental message from the Krishna. Huh? He's the Diras. He's the Diras. He is Dira. No, he's sober. Sober. He's not disturbed. 
Anything I else? Had, yeah. Any other qualification? You know, he's detachment from the material world. Ah, he's detached from the material world. Anything else? It's a faith in the faith and love from the Krishna. Faith and love. Anything else? He knows about the absolute truth. Ah, yes, yeah. He must have. He has to know something, right? He has to have some knowledge. So, Gyan and Vairag, remember I was speaking earlier today, wherever yes, there's real Bhakti, yes. there will bhakti. be those two things. There will be transcendental knowledge and detachment from the material, right? So those yes. two things, very important. You, you have to, you want to hit, find that person, he's the right Dira, he's the right Acharya to hear from. Okay, we'll go ahead, Maharaji's turn. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Before hearing the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was disturbed by the material world and by his affection for his family, society and community. Thus, Arjuna wanted to become a philanthropic, non-violent man of the world. But when he became good, Buddha, by hearing the Vedic knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita from the Supreme Person, he changed his decision and became a worshipper of Lord Shri Krishna, who had himself arranged the battle of Kuruchi. Arjuna worshipped the Lord by fighting with his so-called relatives, and in this way he became a pure devotee of the Lord. Such accomplishments are possible only when one worships the real Krishna and not some fabricated Krishna invented by foolish men who are without knowledge of the intricacies of the science of Krishna described, described in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavad Okay. So, how did Arjuna become a pure devotee? By following the Krishna's instruction. Yes. He took up Krishna's instruction. But initially, what was Arjuna thinking? Arjuna um, was thinking about his relatives, his uh, guru, not to fight. He was uh, a dhira, actually. He was compassionate. Yeah, he was feeling some compassion. Was that compassion? He was compassionate towards uh, his uh, relatives. What did, well, what did Krishna think about that compassion? Was that actually compassion? No, no, that was not actually compassion. Right, it wasn't actually, because, why not? Yeah. What was wrong with that compassion? Concept. Yes, because Arjuna was thinking on the bodily concept, the, the, the compassion based on the body. What did Krishna say? Krishna said, well, yes? Yes, soul and soul uh, will never be killed. Huh? You are a soul, soul will not be killed by anyone. Yes. Ah. Not a body. Yes, yeah, so you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Because the soul never dies, but not the body. So they change the body. So Krishna wanted to bring Arjuna out of the bodily platform and bring him to the transcendental platform. Transcendental plan. He brought him to the well to the point of surrendering to Krishna, doing what Krishna wanted. Arjuna didn't want to fight, but he did it because Krishna wanted him to do it. So that's the pure devotee. We do what Krishna wants. What do, what does Krishna want? The, the pure devotee of Krishna is surrendered to Krishna. Now, even one time in Jagannath Puri, while Lord Chaitanya was living there, there was one uh, 
man came there and he was arguing about the he said you know the, the lord the name the lord is the supreme male and you're all you're all the lord's prakriti you are feminine in relation to the lord so you're like the wife of the lord so it's the duty of the chaste wife that she should never utter the name of the husband just like mother sita she never uttered the name of ram right those you ladies who are married right you don't utter the name of your husband you just simply say my prabhu right right <laughs> maybe uh, anyway that that used to be the culture and we try to encourage that culture uh, it's a good culture for a woman to take that mood not to utter the name of the husband but simply to refer to hus my husband my prabhu like that and so the man was arguing that why are you all chanting the name of your husband Krishna, you're the Prakriti and Krishna is the Purush and you're all chanting the name of Krishna. This is not good. He was arguing like that. So the devotees, they didn't know quite what to say. So then they said, wait, Lord Chaitanya is going to come. Lord Chaitanya is the personification of all religious principles. He will tell you. And so Lord Chaitanya came. And they told Lord Chaitanya what this man was saying. So Lord Chaitanya replied, he said, It's the duty of a chaste wife to follow the order of her husband. And the order of her husband, Lord Krishna has ordered that we should all chant his name. <laughs> and this way Lord Chaitanya defeated the man's arguments. Okay. So, uh, I don't know how I got into that, now, but where are we? Oh, we were talking about Arjuna, yes, Arjuna and his uh, relationship with the Lord, that he, he has to follow the order of the Lord. Yeah, Arjuna surrendered to Krishna. She shasti ham sadi mam twam prapana. Mind your disciple. He wanted to get instruction, so Krishna is instructing him to come out of the illusion and to fight. And this way, Arjuna became pure devotee. He became glorious. You follow the instruction of Krishna. All right, we'll go ahead. Prabhu? Ma one gentleman can read for us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. According to the Vedas Sutra, Sambhuta is the source of birth and sustenance, as well as the reservoir that remains after annihilation, Janmadi Astyayatha. The Srimad Bhagavatam the naturally, natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutra by the same author maintains that the source of all emanations is not like a dead spoon but is abhignya or fully conscious. The primal, the primeval Lord, Sri Krishna always says in the Bhagavad Gita 7.26 that he is fully conscious of past, present and future and that no one, including demigods such as Shiva and Brahma, knows him fully. Certainly, half-educated spiritual leaders who are disturbed by the tides of material existence cannot know him fully. They try to make some compromise by making the mass of humility the object of worship. But they do not know that such worship is only a myth because the masses are imperfect. The attempt by these so-called spiritual leaders is something like pouring water on the leaves of a tree instead of the root. The natural process is to pour water on the root. But such disturbed leaders are more attracted to the leaves than the root. Despite their perpetually watering the leaves, however, everything dries up from for want of nourishment. Okay. So, uh, 
Vedanta Sutra, right? You're familiar with Vedanta Sutra. Who has given us the Vedanta Sutra? Uh, Vyasadeva. Right. So Vedanta Sutra, this is uh, the source of Vedanta Sutra is Nyaya. It's actually based on Nyaya, logic. Logic, yes. Yeah. It's not Shruti or Smriti, this is Nyaya. Yeah, it's Nyaya. So, Prabhupada quotes uh, Janmajasya Yata. This is also from Vedanta Sutra. And Srimad Bhagavatam also quotes Janmajasya Yata. That the cause of everything or the reservoir, the the creation, the maintenance after it is all coming from one supreme. So Vedanta Sutra, same author Vyasadeva, is the source of all emanations, not a dead stone. One is, but it's abhigna, abhigna, fully conscious. The Lord is fully conscious, Bhagavad Gita, knows everything. But then Prabhupada talks, half-educated spiritual leaders are disturbed by the, by the, the tides of material existence, cannot know him. And they try to make some compromise by making the mass of humanity the object of worship. How do they do that? How will they do, go about making the mass of humanity the object of worship? What, um, what will they do? Like, um, like uh, by, uh, like, Maharaj, like uh, when they worship demigods and all those, so that becomes avidhi purvakam. So, you know, uh, uh, that is how they mislead the uh, mass. Mass of humanity, the object of worship. They're offering worship to the mass of people. How do you think they go about that? Do they do puja? Yeah. Will they light some incense and offer it to a crowd of people? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> what, what are they going to do for the mass of people? Philanthropic activities, Maharaj. Yes, right. Philanthropic activities. What kind of philanthropic activities? Like to uh, help a poor uh, person, poor uh, community to help them to get the food and right. things. Yes, right. These kind of things, really. Like, like in India they say it's Daritra Narayana. <laughs> what? Daritra Narayana they say in... Uh, oh yeah, okay. Uh, yes. In uh, the words. Uh, other, yeah, and they also have another saying, they say, Manav, uh, Madhava Seva, Manava Seva, right? So service to, yes. service to man is service to God. So, any... But that is not... That yes? Is, no, Mara. Huh? But that is not correct, right? Like, ultimately, service to Madhava is service to mankind. Service to Madhava is service to mankind. Yes. Is service to man service to God? If we do so... Well, no, phil no, philanthropic... That, that is not the right approach, right, Mara? Yeah, definitely not. If you... If you simply... Just like the devotees, they wanted to do prasadam distribution. So, they were thinking, we'll go to the poor areas. And Prabhupada said, that is not our path. He said, that is karmakanda. If you just go to the poor people and feed the poor people, he said, that's not bhakti, that's karmakanda. Why? Um, 
marriage it doesn't uh, uh, elevates the person who helps them and not the person who receives this also he will understand what is the truth uh, what is the absolute truth also marriage well they might do you know i mean you they yeah. can they can definitely you give them prasadam there's some benefit Prasadam will help Kul Maharaj, but other like philanthropic activities just only to help their beliefs and they will forget the thing later on. Yeah, yeah uh, feeding the poor people, if you just go to the poor people, you're not seeing everybody equally. We should see everyone equally. The rich people and the poor people, they both need Krishna consciousness. Those people who are rich, they may not be hungry, but they, they need Krishna consciousness, they don't have that. They need to be, therefore Prabhupada said, you, don't, you should go everywhere, you don't make distinction between rich and poor. You have to give everyone Krishna consciousness. And when it comes to food distribution, then we, everyone's invited. The rich people are often also needing Krishna consciousness just as much as the poor. There's no doubt about that. So worshipping the mass of people, this is how they, they would do it, like that. You open a school, you have some program for the feeding people, you know, this kind of work. This is, this is not spiritual, not unless you do it. I mean, it can become, of course, you give prasadam. Just like in Mayapur, Prabhupada told us, nobody should go hungry within 10 kilometers of the temple, distribute prasadam, and, we, and he, when they distribute prasadam, we have kirtan going on, so that they hear the holy name. So let them eat, sit and eat prasadam and hear the holy name. So that's spiritual, that's spiritual program. But. Worshipping the mass of people, right? Offer this is what the mass of people they they feel happy when they think that they're getting some benefit like this. So politicians do these kind of things to get the votes, to win the people, to get their votes, to get their support, promise them more, sense gratification, take care of them. Yeah. And this is true all over the world where you've got this democratic system, politicians will try to win followers in this way, giving some material benefit. Trump, Trump, one, of the, one thing he did in America, he promised all the people who were in Vietnam that they would get good money, good pension, the government would take care of them. So everybody who was in Vietnam, they were all voting for him. <laughs> so these kind of things. So this is a, the worship to the mass of people, satisfying the senses. So Prabhupada said, this is like what? Pouring water where? On the leaves. Yeah. What will happen? You pour the water on the leaf. The plant would uh, dry up and uh, it would, uh, in the lack of nourishment it will dry and and the leaves will fall off, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Krishna is the root. Krishna is the mula, mula prakriti, the root of the material nature. You know, in Vaishnava philosophy, we say Vishnu is the cause of the material nature, comes from him. But what do the Mayavadis say? Where, do, where does What's the relationship between Vishnu and the material nature, the Prakriti? Uh, mm -hmm. They say like uh, the, the, they come automatically, like you know, they don't correlate with... Uh... We, say, we say Vishnu is the cause of the Prakriti, they, they say Prakriti is the cause of Vishnu. Chemical, they say it's all because of the chemical changes and all those these things comes automatically. That's what. 
Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's read next. Somebody read. Mary Jane? Sri Shopanisha devises. Mary Jane? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sri Ishopanisha advises us to pour water on the root, the sources of all germination. Worship of the mass of humanity by rendering bodily service, which can never be perfect, is less important than service to the soul. The soul is the root that generates different types of bodies according to the law of karma. To serve human beings by medical aid, social help and educational facilities while at the same time cutting the throats of poor animals in slaughterhouses is no service at all to the soul than in being. So Srila Prabhupada is explaining to us what is important taking care of the soul. The slaughterhouses this business, this is not what we want. Poor animals. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati saw somebody carrying a fish on the basket. He was on his bicycle and he had a fish tied on the basket. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati looked so, so foolish, so unfortunate that they have to eat this kind of, every, there's so much food, why they have to do this, why they have to kill, the killing business. So Atmaha, right? We say the killer of the soul. We'll go ahead. Prabhus. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandava Pranam Maharaj. Aha, Dandava Pranam. The living being is perpetually suffering in different types of bodies from the material miseries of birth, old age, disease and death. The human form of life offers one a chance to get out of this entanglement simply by re-establishing the lost relationship between the living entity and the Supreme Law. The Lord comes personally to teach this philosophy of surrender unto the Supreme. Sambhuda. Real service to humanity is rendered when one teaches surrender to and worship of Supreme Lord with fully, full love and energy. That is the instruction of Sri Ishopadishad in this mantra. Alright. So real teaching, real education. <laughs> Very important. Human form of life is a chance to get out. Don't waste it. We'll go ahead. Another Prabhu, Prabhu's Matt, gentleman, please read. Hare Krishna, Dandapanna Maharaj. Hare Bo. The simple way to worship the Supreme Lord in this age of disturbance is to hear and chant about his great activities. The mental speculators, however, think that the activities of the Lord are imaginary. Therefore, they refrain from hearing of them and invent some word jugglery without any substance to divert the attention of innocent masses of people. Instead of hearing of the activities of Lord Krishna, such as pseudo-spiritual masters, advertise themselves by inducing their followers to sing about them. In modern times, the number of such pretenders has increased considerably and it has become a problem for the pure devotees of the Lord to save the masses of people from the unholy propaganda of these pretenders and the pseudo incarnations. Oh. 
So, who are these people? What we spoke about some miseducators previously. Do you remember? We spoke about two particular kinds of miseducators, misguiding the people. What were they called? Oh. Yes, right. Vedavada Rata. Vedavada Rata, what are they desiring to do? They misguided the people. Yeah, where, what's their goal generally? The Vedavada Rata? Can you tell me something about them, Madhaji? Vedas are all wrong? Well, they're not usually preachers. Usually they, ju they just recite the Vedas. Oh. They just recite the Vedas. Why? What's their purpose? They want to go to heaven. Yes, sense. They want to elevate themselves up to heaven, to enjoy the life there in the heavenly planets. That's what they're thinking. Recite the Vedas, we'll go to heaven, we'll enjoy. That's their mood. But the Maya Aparita Gyanas, what about, what are they doing? They're the, uh, the worst of mankind, they're, they reject the Lord as Supreme. We don't call them the lowest of mankind, that's the Naradhamma. Uh -huh. yeah, right. Who are the Naradhammas then? Uh, Naradhamma are the lowest of mankind. Why, why are they the lowest? Because they, they don't accept the Lord as supreme. No, they, they... there's something special. Why, why they're Naradhamma? There are many people who don't accept the Lord. But they're not all Naradhammas. After having the birth of human, they, they just waste their life simply like animals in the four activities. Well, they, but they don't just have human birth. They have a very, they have a good birth. Uh, they, yeah, they don't accept the, um, the worship of the Lord Krishna or the... Uh, culture of the family members what they are following but they have yeah they have they have that birth by birth they have some opportunity to take up these things yes. they may yes. be brahmins yeah they may be brahmanas they may, but they, they have some good birth but they're not able, somehow they, they, they don't they couldn't be interested we just we would say apathy they have no interest apathetic you know, it's a very big thing. People are so apathetic. Oh, I just want to read the newspaper. I just want to relax. I just want to be comfortable. I have my home. I'm happy, you know. I don't need all this religion stuff. This is, you know, my aparita gana. But they may even be big scientists and so on like that. And they may be sp big... They could, they could be speculators presenting their own philosophy, but they don't follow any authorized system. They, they will speculate, present their own theories like we're saying. What jugglery? Play with words, present something. So they don't, they don't surrender, of course, as you say. So these are all mis... Yeah. Yes? These are all miseducated people, pseudo-spirit, and they may pose themselves, they become spiritual masters, mislead the people, misguide the people. And we heard even some of them pose themselves as incarnations of God. And Prabhupada said, because this is Kali Yuga, there's more and more pretenders. And this is why when Lord Chaitanya came, he came as a covered incarnation. He did not reveal himself because he knew in the Kali Yuga there will be many cheaters. There will be many people coming and claiming that they're God and demanding worship. 
Therefore, Lord Chaitanya showed them the highest standard, right? Be renounced. Lord Chaitanya showed the example of Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga. Right? That's how it's explained. Vairagya and Vigya, or we say Gyan and Vairag, these two things, along with devotion. This is what, what people need to see. But people, they, they, they talk about devotion, they have very less Gyan and no Vairag. This is the problem. So people are, mass of people, the masses of people from the unholy propaganda. People are all put, you know, we're, we're, everybody influenced by this kind of propaganda. Prabhupada saw the Mayavadi philosophy books everywhere, all over the world. You go, you see these Mayavadi books, Mayavadi philosophy. Very common. And, and, and Prabhupada gave the example about communism. How did the communists spread their philosophy? They said the Russians, they never really came to India. They sent the books and people picked it up. And that was how Bengal became communist, Kerala became communist, so different states became communist. They got the books. People didn't come to preach to them, they just got some books. So Prabhupada told her, he said, send the books, distribute the books, let them get Krishna consciousness. When I, when I went to the temple, I was thinking I was God, because I'd been reading Mayavadi books. So I was, I was thinking, we're all God. And so this, it was so common. So we have to work, make some propaganda to try to counter this situation, give people the real education. We'll go ahead, Prabhu. Prabhu can read. Yes, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. The Upanishads indirectly draw our attention to the Premaral uh, Lord, Sri Krishna, but the Bhagavad Gita, which is the summary of all Upanishads, directly points to Sri Krishna. Therefore, one should hear about Krishna as he is by hearing from the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. And in this way, one's mind will gradually be clinched of all contaminated things. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17 says, By hearing of the activities of Lord, the devotee draws the attention of the Lord. Thus the Lord being situated in the heart of every living being helps the devotee by giving him proper direction. The Bhagavad Gita 10.10 confirms this Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yena Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada explained that Upanishad is only indirectly speaking about Krishna. We don't see the word Krishna anywhere in any of the any of the verses, any of the mantras. The word Krishna is not there. Just speak about the Lord, the Supreme. There's no mention of Krishna. But read Bhagavad Gita, it's very clear. Krishna says very clear. It's all there in Bhagavad Gita. Sometimes to understand the Shruti, you have to go to the Smriti, because the Shruti is not so clear. That's why we have to go to take shelter of the Smriti, more important. We'll go ahead. Prabhu? The Lord's inner direction cleanses the devotee's heart of all contamination produced by the material modes of passion and ignorance. Non-devotees are under the say of passion and ignorance. One who is in passion cannot become detached from material anchoring, and one who is in ignorance cannot know what he is or what the Lord is. Thus, when one is in passion or ignorance, uh, there is uh, no chance of self-realization. However, much one may play the parts of a religionist. For a devotee, the modes of passion and ignorance are removed by the grace of the Lord. In this way, the devotee becomes situated in the quality of goodness, the sign of perfect Brahmana. 
anyone can qualify as a brahmana uh, if he follows the path of devotion service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master shrimad bhagavatam uh, uh, second canto 4 chapter 18 shloka also says kereta hanandra palinda pokasha abira shumba yavana kashadaya yenye cha papa yada pashraya shraya sujanti tasmai prabha vishnave namaha namaha any low thank you maharaj any lower person can be purified by the guidance of a pure devotee of the lord for the lord is extraordinarily powerful thank you okay so that that sloka that's from prayers of sukadeva goswami sukadeva goswami was asked to describe creation and he quoted this verse he's describing all types of sinful races kirta means the chinese han han is the europeans and then at the end you've got the uh kasha kasha daya kasha desh that's the chinese kirita's african right hans is the germans andra like that and then and then then kasha daya kasha daya is the chinese so all different races of sinful people they can all be purified by the touch of the lord through his devotees so this is the idea that you need the mercy of the the devotees which comes through the lord himself because the devotee carry they carry the lord in their heart so wherever they go they purify that place so proper is describing how we're all in the mode of passion and ignorance tamagun rajagun ignorance we don't know what to do what's proper action passionate we're very attached and stubborn but if we do devotional service if we engage in the activities of devotion we come to the mode of goodness and we develop the brahminical qualities and probably anybody can become a brahmin right does it mean everybody's going to become a brahmin is everybody going to join become a brahmin no some people who join those people who are interested who want to be brahmins they will come but not everybody sometimes people say oh no how is it possible everybody anybody can become a brahmin anybody who will take the training they can become a brahmin they can come to the brahminical platform they have to take the training not only the initiation initiation is one part but then you have to get the training also that goes with it to bring us up to the mode of goodness to get us out of passion and ignorance this is very important right you have to analyze how much are we influenced by passion and ignorance okay we'll just go ahead finish mariji thank you so much maharaj okay prabhu go ahead attains brahmanical qualifications he becomes happy and enthusiastic to render devotional service to the lord automatically the signs of god is unfilled before him by knowing the signs of god one gradually becomes freed from material attachments and one's doubtful mind becomes crystal clear by the grace of the lord one who attains these states is a liberated soul and can see the lord in every step of life this is the perfection of sambhava and described in this mantra of sri upanishad hari krishna hari krishna so what's a brahmin what are these brahminical qualifications that the mode of goodness okay can you tell me about what what does it mean to be in the mode of goodness what kind of qualities will we have are krishna mara yes shama tapas kshama tapas tamas tau cham shanti rarchavam eva cha gyanam vigyanam astikyam brahma karma swarcha yes those are mentioned in bhagavad gita nine qualities 
Good. Yeah, we should know, we should have these Brahminical qualities. Not that we're interested just to be Brahmins, but we're interested to be devotee, to become Vaishnava. And, prob and that's why one who is actually Vaishnava, then they get the sacred thread to show that they're actually more than a Brahmana. So, of course, this was a, a big uh, controversial thing to give the Brahminical thread to people not born in Brahmana families. Usually only the higher caste would get the sacred thread. But by Lord Chaitanya's program, and according, based on scriptures, there's a verse in the scripture that says, just like bell metal can be made into gold by the alchemical process. In the same way, anyone who is properly initiated and trained, they can become a Brahmana. That's the point. You have to be initiated and trained, then you can become the Brahmana. So, Pra Prabhupada mentioned some of the signs. They'll be happy, they'll be enthusiastic to render devotional service. Very important qualities, right? You have to be happy, joyful souls. Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma. Right? One who's Brahman, he's on the Brahman, he's a joyful soul. Oh, I'm happy, I'm, I know I'm not the body, nothing, to, no, nothing, no misery. An enthusiastic, eager for service. Very good qualities. Utsahan. In the nectar of instruction, when we go on to study that, we have to learn about enthusiasm, to be enthusiastic, to do service for Krishna. That will help us a lot. Very important. So keeping up our enthusiasm for Krishna. Okay, so that was a big purport. We had to go through it. It took more time. I don't know why I was supposed to do two mantras today. I, I, or three mantras in the two classes. I only did two. Anyway, we'll, I think we can still finish in time. The other mantras are shorter, right? We're hearing about the process, the absolute and the relative in relation to knowledge and now worship. So the first, the first three verses of this book, we heard about the proprietor, the supreme proprietor. And then the next section, mantras 4 to mantra 8, we're describing about the, the Maha Bhagavat devotee. Remember we spoke about the Maha Bhagavat devotee? He sees everything and relates, sees all living entities as parts and parcels. And we spoke about how he sees Ekatvam Anupashyataha. Remember? Who knows the meaning? Ekatvam Anupashyata. Ekatvam means? Oneness. Oneness. Oh, does that mean you're a Mayavadi? No, oneness of all, all living entities. All living entities have that oneness. Oh, we're all one. That's Mayavadi philosophy if you speak about oneness. Isn't it? What's the difference between the oneness in Mayavadi philosophy, oneness in Vaishnava philosophy? In Mayavadi philosophy, God and uh, all living entities are one and the same. In our philosophy, Vaishnava philosophy, uh, all, a good Vaishnava must be able to see oneness of all living entities. The same the quality. Dog and Brahmana. Yeah, I'm sorry, you haven't made it clear at all. You have not made it clear, you have not explained yeah. clearly. We are one in, we are one in quantity, quality, not quantity, Maharaj. One in quality. Yes. One in interest, right? We yes, have the, the common interest. Remember, what's the example? No. Family. Family. family, right, the family. The father and the family, the children, they have the common interest. In the same way, Krishna and the parts and parcels 
They are one in interest, the one in quality, different in quantity. Krishna is the master, we are the servants, eternally. But Mayavadis, oneness, you know, one, oh, we're all brothers, all one, it's all one. You know, so-called pol politicians will speak, oh, sub me, bye-bye. You know, we're all brothers and they'll talk like that. They have no real understanding of oneness. And just simply some, spec some words, cheap words they're speaking. So real oneness is to have the common interest with the Lord and to engage people in Krishna conscious activities. Okay, we'll stop here today. Thank you very much. We'll go on. We have to finish. We've got one more week left to finish. So, need your blessings. <laughs> hope, hope we can finish. Okay, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Maharaj Ki. 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 Srila Prabhupada Maharaj Ki.